Hey there! Thanks for tuning into Duck Bricks. I'm Chris and welcome to another LEGO Collection video. So from lions, tigers, dinosaurs, and elephants, LEGO has released a ton of different animal molds throughout the years. And I'm here to showcase my full LEGO animal mold collection. And I figured that this is the perfect time to do this because they just released a ton of new animals in the newest LEGO City Wildlife sub theme, which released on August 1st. So without further ado, let's take everything out of here and take a look at all the different animals that LEGO's made. And just one more note, if we pop on over here, we've got a massive LEGO Neptune Discovery Lab based on the original AquaZone theme, where I've actually placed most of the unique animal molds that are related to underwater animals. So if you're gonna look at the collection and be wondering where are all these sharks, manta rays, and so on, well, they're over here and we'll take a look at them once we wrap up all of the non-aquatic based animals that I have in the shelf over there. All right, so this drawer here is primarily where I keep all my animal molds. It's not purely everything because there's a lot of stuff that honestly I've just kept on the sets, especially the little animals. I usually just tend to keep on the sets themselves or on the CMFs, for instance, the collectible minifigures. But for the most part, these are some of the larger Lego animals. So let's start with these and then kind of work our way through the collection to see what I missed. So there is a lot to get into here. Let me just start by taking everything out completely so we can get a good look at pretty much all the different animals in here. And as I'm doing this, I'm going to try to organize them somewhat by category, at least to the extent that I can. So all the horses will go in one area, all the big cats in another, maybe some elephants in one section, and of course all the dinosaurs and dragons, which honestly are probably what's going to make up the bulk of the collection, are going to be in their own section. So I'm going to do my best. I'm probably going to miss a few here and there, but there's a lot to get into here, so let's just take a look. Secondly, to make things easier, I'm kind of getting to that point right now actually, I'm going to only try to include one of each animal. For instance, I have like 20 of these elephants because I got a ton off of bricks and pieces. Doesn't really make sense to take a look at 20 of the same animals, so I'm really only going to try to pull out one of each animal. Alright, so all of these singular animals that were in this drawer have been lined up all forwards right here. Besides the duplicates that I just lined up on a base plate here, just a couple of extra duplicates for certain animals. This is by no means not every single animal in existence. It absolutely is not all the animals LEGO's made. LEGO makes a ton of these, especially for the LEGO Friends and Girl-Oriented Themes lines, which I don't actually collect every single set, so I certainly am missing a ton of animals there. However, this is almost everything in my collection, although there are a few other things which we'll be getting to in a little bit. This is basically what I have in the drawer right here that's not associated with any particular set or that I actually decided to take apart separately. So the way I've organized this is that I kind of have a few different categories here. Lego obviously loves dinosaurs and kids apparently do too because they keep making more of them. Dinosaurs kind of all just line up right here. You can see a ton of the different T-Rex-like creatures, all these slightly smaller dinosaurs, even smaller ones, and then you've got all of the raptors up at the front, and there are a lot of these. We'll be saving these for the end of the video because there's still a lot more regular animals to get to first other than the dinosaurs, so we'll be taking a look at these in a second. Moving on to this area, we've got some elephant-like creatures as well as just some of the big cats and farm animals here, including one of the rarest animals ever in the form of the goat. We also have a ton of the domesticated animals like dogs and cats. Some baby dinosaurs here, not sure why they're over here, but I've also paired them up with some of the rabbits. We've also got a lot of aquatic animals here, so sharks and manta rays and squids and octopi are all kind of in this area as well. And then we've got a whole row of horses and horse-like creatures dragons on the back here which i actually was kind of surprised i would have expected a few more dragons but yeah these are all the dragons that i've got that were actually specially molded not the brick built dragons of course and then of course we have a lot of the lego elves and lego friends animals that are scattered here again i absolutely don't own every single one but i did manage to get a few of the ones that i personally just wanted to have in my own collection which is why they're all here all together so actually, we're going to start right off with some of the more basic animals, actually some of the first animals LEGO actually put out, which are in the form of the horses. So let's go into it right now. All right, so starting off with the horses here, you may notice that 
This entire row is basically made up of deer and horses, so there are a lot of them to get into here. It is a lot of different animals, and obviously LEGO has made quite a few different variations over the years, and this isn't even all of them. I've got a few different horses in other parts of my collection that we'll be getting to, mostly horses wearing different types of armor, but easily they are the most common animal that LEGO makes. Starting off with one of the first horses you can see right here. This is in the old style of brown, featuring very, very simple printing, super simple design of the horse head and eye, but obviously this worked totally fine for Lego castle sets. You cannot move the legs whatsoever, however you can bend the head up and down, so that was kind of a good start, and it essentially was the classic form of Lego horse all the way up until 2012 when Lord of the Rings actually did something different. And so there are actually quite a few different variations of this particular horse. Obviously, the easiest one to look at here is this particular version, which is just another brown horse, but with slightly more modernized printing. If we compare the two next to each other, first of all, one of them is an old brown and one of them is a new brown, like you can see right here. However, the newer one actually does have a little bit of a pupil as well, which is much harder to make out on the older one because there wasn't any white printing. So the new one definitely did improve the look and feel, although it is still basically the generic horse. And for whatever reason, they did not color in the hair on the newer style of horse. So actually, the older one kind of had it beat in that category. And that barely scratches the surface of the horses of this particular time. So let me go ahead and grab just a few of the different horses which were made, again, before Lord of the Rings. So Lord of the Rings in 2012 introduced a lot newer style of horses, but before them, we got basically this standard version. And I've just knocked over a ton of different animals there, but let's try to grab every single one of these, kind of pile them all up. This is still the older style, so... Yep, we've got a bunch of different horses. So first of all, we get a black color of the horse. So that's nice to see as well. Just some color variation. This is, again, one of the more basic ones that we got in some of the castle sets, town sets, and even some of the Paradisa sets. And as we go into the more modern era, we got a lot of really exquisitely printed horses for the Western theme, particularly for the Native Americans. They received some really fantastically painted horses. I really do love the design on these. Very intricate printing, especially compared to even what we get nowadays. This is even nicer than some of the modern horses we get. This is another variation of the Western style of horse, just with completely different printing. Some really interesting designs being used for the horses here, and different color saddles as well so that's kind of cool to see and moving onwards to the more modern fantasy era stuff we got some stuff for kingdoms so kingdoms which was the second line of lego castle that was kind of this style of the armor here of course the standard lego 2008 fantasy era castle got a couple horses as well these are just using different colors of the horse headpiece which was actually introduced for lego knights kingdom 2 all the way back in 2006 we just got a few of that returning for the 2008 sub theme and we also have a silver variation in the printing here for the Fantasy Era 2008 horse. So a lot of different style of clothing and armor that they introduced for the horses, which looks really good. I do like the kind of design that they have here to really make it feel a lot more realistic. Moving into some other themes, again for kingdoms, we have one of the more villainous horses. This was for the Dragon Knights or the Evil Dragon Knights in the Kingdoms era, featuring a brand new head sculpt for the unicorn-like horse head, but mostly just for the armor here that can actually be fully removed from the horse head itself. The eyes also get a slightly more determined and serious expression compared to the other black horse, which I find to be kind of funny. And we also got one of these variations for the Prince of Persia theme, the Disney tie-in in 2011. This was another very specially colored style of horse with some pretty ornate detailing on this kind of carpet-like element they introduced for it, or the printing that they introduced for this horse. So it's just a nice variation to have that's very unique to the particular region. And finally, one of the last standard style horses came in the form of this particular version from the Kingdom's Joust D to C set. This is actually one of the rarest versions of the classic horse, specifically because it uses the more modern version of the Black Falcon's livery, which is something that remains exclusive to that direct-to-consumer set to this day. It's a really special piece that actually makes the horse look really cool, even though underneath it's really just a standard black horse. That being said, it is still a special unique variant because of the specialized black Black Falcon armor, which I think looks really good, and it's a big shame we didn't get more of this in other sets because I think it would look really good next to, say, the other LEGO Black Falcon soldiers from the more modern Black Falcon revamped sets. 
Of course, there are many, many more horse variations with this vintage style of armor piece, which you can see here on one of the older horses, as well as just different head sculpts for the horses as well, like a dragon-themed head sculpt for this horse, which was introduced for the Dragon Knights all the way back in the 1990s. And these, of course, are not all of them, just a few examples I wanted to point out. Of course, Lord of the Rings changed everything because in 2012, we got a new mold for the horse. This time you can actually have them raise up on their hind legs. So a nice inclusion there, some extra added articulation while still being able to move the head. So you can really get this into a much more dynamic pose, which is really nice to see. I'm glad that they actually made the change to this style of horse. I really do appreciate it. And we've gotten a lot more updated horses of this style since then. So this was kind of the basic, just standard variety horse that you got in 2012 with the Lord of the Rings line. We got an evil version of the horse for the ring rates. We actually got three of these in sets, so really nice to get this kind of evil looking horse. It has some metallic printing for the armor on the top of the head there, but in general it's just kind of a black version of the standard horse that we got. We have a few different variations for different themes. First of all, this horse with the black saddle was from the Lone Rangers theme in 2013. Again, another Disney property that required a horse. So this is from Lone Rangers, the Western style theme. So just a slightly different style of saddle there. And this horse right here was for the 2013 castle theme. They use the exact same style of saddle, except this time they have a brand new mold for the side awning here. You can see it's a slightly different piece of armor that the horse is wearing compared to the 2008 ones, which just feels a little bit more refined and more cloth-like. Very recently, we got a brand new recolor of the horse in the Medieval Blacksmith. From 2021, the LEGO Idea set introduced this very nice tan horse. It's a brand new color to get. And we also got another new color just this year in 2022 with a brand new dark orange style of horse for LEGO City, which you can see right here. Moving onwards though, from these standard horses, we actually got a few different variations of fantasy styled horses. In 2008, we got the skeleton horse. So we got a skeleton horse in black and white. It's a completely new mold. It's a really interesting one too. And one that I do hope that they use more in sets because it's just a really cool looking design. We also got a glow in the dark version for the Lego Monster Fighters line. Also around the 2012 era, this was for Monster Fighters fully glow in the dark alongside a chariot to be pulled by the horse so a cool design in general to get for the horse and it obviously was something that makes total sense for a ghostly skeleton horse and with that those were basically all of the different horse variations on the standard minifigure compatible or somewhat minifigure scale lego horse However, there's a few other kind of random horses to mention here because LEGO obviously does these for a variety of different themes. A very specially molded horse that we haven't seen since the original Toy Story sets was Bullseye right here. Obviously, this is a completely custom mold meant to specifically represent the Bullseye character from Toy Story. His head cannot be moved, but both legs can be moved, so it is a nice inclusion for that. Introduced around the 2010 era when Toy Story 3 first came out, he actually has some really interesting rubberized pieces for the tail and the top of the head here that really makes him feel like a very specially sculpted mold. Moving onwards, we have another nicely colored horse. This was kind of the standard variation, just kind of missed this one from the Lego Kingdoms line that specifically appeared in the very sought after Mill Village Raid. Over here, we have one of the Elves Pegasus horses. So this is basically the style of the Lego Friends horses. I do have a few other Friends horses with me, but this one I did want to point out in particular because it does have the wings attached to it, which I just think makes it look a lot cooler. Just a really nice looking horse. Although, of course, this is more meant to fit in the style of Lego Friends than standard minifigures, which is why it has some very prominent eyelashes because for whatever reason, all the Lego Friends animals have to have eyelashes. Not really sure why they'd have to have that. Moving onwards, we have somewhat of a horse, although officially this is kind of a griffin-like creature. This is from Lego Harry Potter. This is Buckbeak. We did get a brand new molded Buckbeak in the newer Harry Potter style sets, but this was the original one that was introduced for the Prisoner of Azkaban style wave. And I guess it sort of counts like a horse-like creature, but for Star Wars, we have the Tauntaun as well. Plus one of the creatures that the Gungans ride on Naboo. This was one of the earliest ones. We have not gotten another Kadu-like creature like this since 1999. So kind of surprising. We've never seen another Lego rendition of this, but you can see the original one right here. 
and I guess an animal that can be used like a horse is a camel. I don't know. It just kind of fits in this category. We got two different camels, a light tan and a dark tan version, both for the Prince of Persia line, which unfortunately have not appeared in Lego form since. For Lego Frozen sets, or the Lego Disney Princess sets, we got a brand new mold for an icy snow-like horse. This is a magical creature. It's a really nice rendition of a horse with a very long sweeping tail, absolutely meant to specifically represent the magical horse from the Frozen 2 movie, but I just thought it was a cool mold in general because, of course, you can see it, it's fully transparent blue. Moving on from the horses, there's a couple of reindeer that we've gotten. The first reindeer we got was the standard Sven from Frozen, which you can see right here. Again, very much in the cartoonish animated style of build. But then we finally got our official Lego City or regular minifigure style reindeer right here, which is a really nice figure to get. We actually first got a transparent blue version of this, thanks to Harry Potter as well. And thankfully, we got a standard colored version in the more recent Elf Clubhouse Winter Village and the much more recent 2021. One Santa Sleigh, which came with a whopping four of these in one set. But with that, we have summed up this massive pile of horses and horse-like characters. LEGO has certainly made a lot of these over the years. Definitely a ton of different variety, as we can see here. They're really fun creatures to collect in general because LEGO does do a lot of different things with the printing of them. Although, of course, there's a lot more interesting animals to get into, so we have just barely scratched the surface. And you're going to hear that a lot in this video. And so with that, we're going to move on to a slightly smaller category this time. Next up are the LEGO elephants. And and mammoth like molds. So originally, back in 2003 for Lego Orient Expedition, Lego introduced the elephant. This was kind of, to be honest, thrown together from existing dinosaur pieces. For instance, the legs and the body were all from the original dinosaurs line, so they were specifically molded for the original Lego dinosaurs. The only new mold here was the head and the ears, of course. The ears can be rotated, which is a very nice thing. And they actually made two of these. They had a lighter gray elephant in the temple set for the Orient Expedition line, and they had a completely separate elephant caravan set with a dark stone gray elephant, which you can see here, the old Old dark gray featuring a carriage that he could pull as well as a custom fabric element that mounted on top of the elephant. They were nice for what they were for their time but to be honest they definitely were not the most to scale animals. They obviously are very rudimentary compared to today and while you can move them around somewhat the use of the dinosaur limbs is kind of awkward looking for these animals in particular. It just doesn't quite fit and that's why Lego actually decided to make new elephants later on. The first hint that we were going to be getting any sort of new animals came in the form of this 2018 Mammoth. Now this was a brand new mold introduced for LEGO City. It specifically was molded for the Mammoth itself, and you can see here the head can be moved around, but not much else. Still, it was very nice to see this. It introduced a brand new trunk element, this piece right here. So it definitely was a sign that maybe sometime in the future, more elephant-like creatures were to come. And this was a welcome addition because we had never gotten a woolly mammoth before. Now, thankfully, we did not have to wait too, too long for an official LEGO City-styled elephant or one that's minifig compatible. Just last year in 2021, we got this fantastic elephant mold. Obviously, the legs cannot be moved, but you can move the head up and down, move the trunk side to side. So really nice creature to get here. I'm a big fan of this particular elephant mold. And again, I managed to purchase a ton of these off of bricks and pieces, so I'm very happy they made it available. They actually made two slightly different variations of it from these sets, one with the longer tusks for the male elephants, and one with shorter tusks to represent the female elephants, so a nice distinction to include there, as well as an adorable brand new mold for a baby elephant. This again is all new for LEGO City, even featuring the foot kind of taking a step here, so just a really cute mold to have in general, and he goes alongside very well with the larger elephants introduced for this wave. However, these are not the only LEGO elephants we got in recent years. You see, in 2019 and 2020, LEGO Friends introduced a jungle sub-theme, so we got a couple of very, very Friends-styled elephants. Again, their own separate mold, but unfortunately not really elephants that could be used in any application outside of LEGO Friends because of the very large eyes. Again, with those eyelashes, I don't know why the elephant... I mean, I guess elephants, it makes sense, because they actually do have very prominent eyelashes. But again, it just feels kind of cartoonish to have these super large 
large eyes with eyelashes here. They did have their own baby elephant mold as well. So this was a cute addition. I can see this fitting in fairly well with some of the other elephants, but certainly not quite as good as the actual city style baby elephant they made, which just feels a little bit more realistic, at least when compared to the standard Lego animals that we see with standard Lego minifigs. But moving on from the elephants, which again, we got a surprisingly high amount of different elephants across the entire LEGO brand. It's now time to take a look at some of the other more realistic styled or modern day LEGO animals in the form of the big cats, as well as some of the farm animals. So let's take a look at the big cats first. They actually were introduced around 2016 and still are around today. Starting off here, we got three different big cats for the LEGO City Jungle Explorers sub-theme, which was a fantastic new sub-theme for LEGO City that really gave us a lot of variety in different animals. First off, we have this tiger here. Again, you can move the head up and down like so, as well as the back legs. You can really just get this all posed up, very similarly to the 2012 horses, so really great articulation that can be found out of this animal right here. Now, of course, we did get a somewhat minifigure scale tiger actually this year, January of 2022 in the Lego Disney Princesses line. But this again was actually specifically supposed to fit within the Friends slash Disney Princesses style. So personally, it's not my favorite thing. I actually really do prefer the standard Lego minifigure style, but it is still nice. And I do appreciate getting another tiger in Lego format, especially for people who like the animal, but never got a chance to pick up the 2016 Lego City set. We also have some sort of a leopard here, so you can see right here the spotted pattern. Just again, a good and useful animal to get for any kind of Lego zoo or safari-like expedition. You can really see a lot of detail packed into this animal. And then a black panther here, which again is very useful, not just for realistic Lego city stuff and for Lego jungle and wildlife themed stuff, but again, of course, for black panther from Marvel as well. Really nice to see an actual dedicated black panther mold. They actually managed to continue this mold by introducing a brand new Sabretooth Tiger for the LEGO Arctic line, again the same line that introduced the Mammoth. This is using the same body piece as the other big cats, but has a specially molded new head, which again makes sense because a Sabretooth Tiger would need a specially molded head all to himself. We also got this cougar-like animal here. It seems to be a female cat, or at least maybe a slimmer version of one of the big cats in this darker tan color. And we also recently got a new lighter tan color in the form of a lioness. It's the female version of the lion introduced in 2020. And thankfully, again, did not have to wait too, too long to finally get a full-on Lego male lion in the Lego City line. We had never gotten one of these in the standard minifigure scale before, so really awesome to get this just last year in 2021. And we also got another rare white version of the lion as well, so really nice to see two different colorations of these in completely different colors, which makes a lot of sense to include because if you're gonna have the mold, why not make the most use of it and include different colors? Alongside those lions, we got a brand new mold for the lion cub. This is a very adorable little lion cub creature, which again comes in the two different colors to represent the two different male lions. Moving onwards though, those are basically all the big cats. So now we can take a look at some of the farm animals here and some of the bears as well. Just this kind of scale of animals, the one I want to cover here first. The standard cow here was one of the first farm animals we got. This was introduced in the Lego City farm line in around 2010 to 2011. This has also become one of the rarest Lego animals because it has never appeared since that initial line, at least in the standard cow coloration with the black and white spots. So I definitely do want to mention that this is a very, very notable animal. One of the rarest ones on this list, just due to how expensive it is for being in one of the most exclusive Lego City farm sets. Thankfully, the standard brown version of the cow did appear in quite a few more sets, last appearing in a more recent LEGO train set of all things, transporting livestock. So while it is nice to get the standard brown version of the cow, it's a very nice mold. I am still holding out hope we will still get the more recognizable version of the LEGO cow in a future set someday because it's just a really good animal and it's a shame it was only used once in 2011. Moving onwards, we have a couple of bears as well. Originating first in the early 2000s, we got a polar bear for the Lego Arctic line. This was again a very basic animal build, but it's really interesting we actually even got one of these. The head can be moved up and down, but there's no printing, it's just a very standard animal-like build. And finally, later on, we got some bears for the Lego City line. We again got a new polar bear for the Arctic line. This time you can move the legs all the way up so you can have this bear be reaching upwards and fully standing up on his legs, as well as having some printing on the head, which is a nice addition. 
And we also got a standard brown bear for the LEGO City line as well. Again, homeboy can stand all the way up on those hind legs, reach up for that honey, which is a very, very nice inclusion for the bear itself. They also did a black bear in this same exact molding for the LEGO Miners line in 2018. For the more fantasy side of things, using this kind of similar scale of the Lego animals or the mid-scale animals, we got some wargs for the Lord of the Rings and Hobbit line. These are really cool because their jaws can snap open and shut, so very menacing creatures. Really a great use of this dog-like mold, which really was only used for the wargs in particular, but I think it looks really cool. I love the way the jaws can open and shut. They can lean downwards like they're sniffing or hunting, and we got three different colors of the wargs, so really nice to get a a lot of different variety in this animal. From there, moving onwards to kind of our last category of smaller farm animals, we of course have to start off with the holy grail of any Lego animal collection, this is the goat. So for those of you who aren't aware, the goat appeared in only one set. You got two of him, but he was only in one larger set. It was a kingdom set called the Mill Village Raid. Now the goat mold has officially been confirmed as destroyed. In fact, one of the Lego designers, Mark Stafford, wanted to include it in a Jurassic Park set, and he could not because Lego informed him that the mold was destroyed. So Lego can no longer make the goat piece very, very sad. I hope they resurrect it at some point in the future because this is a very sought after Lego animal. It's a very cute little design for a goat, has a lot of applications, and that makes it one of the rarest Lego animals. Last time I checked, it's around $75 for just the goat alone. Just this one piece, $75 on BrickLink, and that's at the time of this recording. Given that I typically record my videos literally months, if not half a year in advance, I bet the price has already gone up based on the time I record this, so I would be surprised if the price is a lot higher than just 75 right now. It is truly one of the rarest and most valuable animals in my collection and I'm really happy to be able to finally own the goat. However, alongside the goat, there are a few other standard barn animals as well. So we get different colorations of Lego pigs, like this one that has some spots on it, again from the Mill Village Raid, really gave us a lot of fantastic animals. The standard pink pig, which thankfully has been appearing in bulk in some build a minifigure towers, at least here in the US, as well as an unprinted kind of tan colored Lego pig as well. And these are not all the different pigs. We've gotten a lot of different colors. This is just kind of a small sampling because a lot of my pigs are in the respective sets they came in, like the Harry Potter Burrow set as well as the pirate set, the Black Seas Barracuda or the Pirates of Barracuda Bay, so just different colorations and printing on the pigs themselves. Some other farm animals we've gotten over the years, also originating in the Kingdoms line, are these chickens. Now we get a few unprinted chickens in some random vehicle sets as either decorations on the car and whatnot, but these are really the only ones that are meant to be living animals. A dark tan version as well as a plain white version, just some nice chicken animals to get. I'm happy this mold is still around. And just last year in 2021, LEGO introduced the new sheep mold in a Disney Mickey and Friends set. However, it is rumored that this summer of 2022, or maybe by the time this video comes out, we already will be getting them, we'll be getting a new LEGO City farm line. So if I had to guess, this sheep will be appearing in the LEGO City farm sets this year as well. Lastly, on the subject of pigs and farm animals, we do get a few different pigs for the Toy Story line. In particular, this is the ham figure. We get a few different variations like the standard one here, as well as one that was covered in dirt for the Toy Story 3 lineup, which was a garbage disposal scene, as well as a more villainous ham wearing a bowler hat from the opening to Toy Story 3. And what's interesting is that they have this very non-Lego-like rubberized piece that literally is just meant to be the stopper on the bottom and he does work as an actual piggy bank for Lego coins as well, so it's just a fun mold to have in general. With that though, we can now move on to the rest of the animals. We have an ever-growing pile of used animals here that we've burned through, but there's still a lot more to get to, so let's now move on to some more standard, realistic-styled Lego animals in the form of the dogs and cats. So zooming in all the way here, you'll notice that first of all, I realized I had an ungodly amount of the classic Lego dog. This was kind of a similar piece that was introduced for Harry Potter in the form of the Grimm. It was the wolf piece, but was recolored for Lego City as a dog in around 2008. 
I'm assuming that at some point Pick a Brick had these in bulk, so I just got a ton of them. I don't really remember why I have so many, but I figured it was notable enough to just line them up because it's just kind of funny seeing this many dogs. I also included multiple copies of the newer style of dog, which was introduced around 2013 or 2011, somewhere around that time frame for LEGO City, again for the LEGO City Police stuff, which we've gotten a couple recolors over the years, the most notable of which being a specific one colored to be a Dalmatian, which is a really cute animal mold. Moving onwards though, we actually have quite a few different unique dog pieces, most of which were introduced in the more recent collectible minifigures line, as well as just some random city stuff. Again, these are not all the different dogs. We'll be going on a completely different section of dogs when we get into the mainline collectible minifigures later in the video, but first of all, I do just kind of want to showcase the sheer variety in different dogs that we've gotten over the years. So. Obviously, this one's kind of a cheat. It's a balloon dog. They make these in a ton of different colors. I just thought it'd be funny to include here as an example of yet another dog. And forgive me, I am not too, too familiar with the different dog breeds. I do not know the actual names of every single one of these dogs. I know this one's supposed to be some sort of a husky because he has the curled tail introduced for the Arctic stuff in 2014. For the rest of them, though, I'm not really 100% sure. We got this sausage-like dog here, which is maybe a wiener dog, something like that, in the black coloration, which originally came out in the collectible minifigs line in a brown color, but they actually recolored in black for the build of minifig towers in the US and Europe. Up, so nice to see this being included here in an exclusive color. We got a brand new dog mold for Lego City, very much a standard domesticated dog in 2021, so this was just introduced, as well as a dog walker piece, which is a nice piece to have as a seeing eye dog. Moving onwards, we got two different versions of a Pitbull dog, again for LEGO City circa 2019. This is another very fun animal to get, featuring some really cool different colorations in the collar there. I had to get these ones off of bricks and pieces because otherwise you had to purchase some very large city police station sets to get them. Moving onwards, we have another recolor of the husky-like dog in this brownish color. This is specifically in the dark orange color, but also dual molded with black, which is a nice coloration to get. I only own one of these, so it must have been in one of the rarer sets. For LEGO collectible minifigs, we also got a white version of this particular dog until he appeared later on in the Build a Minifig Towers. Next up, another one from the collectible minifigure series in black this time, another very cute dog element. This was the Toto dog, which was introduced for the Lego Wizard of Oz Dorothy minifigure for the Lego Movie 2. Although again, they've recolored him in black for the Build a Minifig Towers, and I'm sensing a trend here. They really like giving us different dogs in the Build a Minifig Towers, and I am not complaining. And lastly, don't get fooled, these are not the same dog. We got one of these tiny dogs for the LEGO Collectible Minifig series right here in 2013. However, we got a slightly more suspicious print on the dog for LEGO Hidden Side as a ghost investigating dog, which was just a very fun, slight variation on the print of the dog here. For its part, LEGO Friends has also introduced a ton of different dogs. I specifically picked out the ones whose color schemes particularly interested me. LEGO Friends did a blind animal collecting series back in the day where they actually recolored different animals in all sorts of wacky colors. So I managed to pick up one of these pearl gold dogs, which I just thought was a kind of cool color to have. Very much not realistic, but still just a fun animal. We also have two of these yellow dogs in different styles, one in a more poodle style and one in the older style that we just saw as well as Crypto the Super Dog from LEGO DC Superhero Girls, which is a very nice looking dog to get and a special mold as well. This is not the last we're going to see of Crypto because we got a more realistic version of him who's currently sitting on my wall of superheroes alongside the other minifigs. And finally, we just have one more Lego dog in the form of the much-anticipated Lego Pluto dog. This was an animal mold that a lot of people were really hoping to get, and finally Lego released him just last year again for the Mickey and Friends theme in 2021. But with that, we can now move on to taking a look at the other animals on this list. Again, we have so many already piled up here. Just a massive, massive pile that's really just been stacked up. And again, there's more to look at. So... First of all, let's just get this whole stack out of the way. This was the needlessly large stack of standard dogs, which you can see right here, with a few variations on the end there. And finally, we can now move on to the Lego cats. So 
First off, we have a lot of standard style of Lego cats. They actually had quite a few of these standard ones. This was the original one that appeared in some of the Belleville and Scala sets. This was one of the oldest Lego cats we got in the older style of printing with the white here. We also got some different orange color rations of cats with slight different variations in printing. So just a few minor differences here. And recently, LEGO has been doing a much different style of cat that's a little bit more realistic for LEGO City in general. Introduced fairly recently for collectible minifigs, we also got a cat with a mohawk for the LEGO Movie 2, although these ones are using the mold for Monkey Kid. First off, we've got just different colorations of cats. You can see their faces right here. Very cute animals. And next up, we have, again, these are specifically supposed to be the character Mo from Monkey Kid. One of them has glasses and a little bit of a body bag that he has wearing there, and one is just in the standard configuration. Cats need something to chase, so why not mention the different rats that LEGO has made or the different mice? This is basically the standard mouse mold that we've seen a lot of times in many different colors across stuff like LEGO Harry Potter and other LEGO themes. We got a glow-in-the-dark mouse for LEGO Monster Fighter, so that's pretty cool to see. We also got this crooked hunchback-like mouse for some of the LEGO Winter Train sets, as well as some of the Belleville stuff. A very strange mold for a mouse, but I guess it looks kind of realistic. And the most recent version of the mouse has been this very realistic version that was actually introduced for, again, the LEGO City Arctic line line in 2018 as well as the Lego Harry Potter revamp line in 2018 as well. Also falling in this somewhat small animal category is this adorable little gecko. We actually first got a green gecko in the Johnny Thunder collectible minifig and we were introduced to this teal recolor a year later in the Lego Creator modular bookstore. So a very cute animal to get. And speaking of smaller LEGO animals, let's just kind of round up this particular section before we move on to some of the more interesting stuff. Over the many years, we've gotten different colorations of the LEGO snake piece, gotten some special snakes for Ninjago, as well as a snake introduced for LEGO Harry Potter, specifically the Nagini style of snake, which recently was recolored just last year in a more jungle-themed color scheme, which I actually really do like. I really like the way that this particular snake has been colored all along its body. Moving onwards, we have some spiders. This is, again, the earliest mold for the Lego spider, which can be seen right here. Just the basic Lego spider, recolored in all sorts of wacky colors for, of course, Spider-Man and Harry Potter and different studio stuff over the years. We also got a fire ant-like creature, which you can see right here for the Lego Indiana Jones line. This specifically is supposed to represent an ant, although it is, for whatever reason, larger than the spider itself. So just kind of a funny piece to get. We also got him for some of the Ant-Man stuff stuff as well. And again, LEGO Harry Potter introduced a brand new spider in this cool yellow color introduced for the Elves line. Just a much more realistic print on the spider itself, and it seems to be the more modern spider LEGO is including in most of their sets. I've somewhat thrown the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Krang in here as well, because I just didn't really know how else to categorize him. He's, I guess, kind of a spider-like or tentacled-like character. And we got a robotic spider introduced for LEGO Nexo Knights that still is being used today in these Spider-Man sets. Lastly, for the insects, Galaxy Squad introduced a really creepy looking dual piece for some sort of an alien insect. This is actually kind of scary looking. I'm not really sure why this freaks me out so much. I'm not a big fan of bugs, but if you just look at this guy, I mean, this looks like he means business. Look, look at how mean this creature looks. The eyes just look like they really are aggressive looking eyes. Even when you flip it over to the other side, he has a stinger and some beady eyes looking at you with some glowing wings, so now he can fly. Ooh, I do not like the look of this mold. Something about it is just a little bit too close to a real life bug, but somewhat cartoonish in its appearances. That kind of makes it a little bit off-putting for me, but I can't deny it's a really good animal mold and absolutely gets the point across in being some creepy space-like parasite that you do not want anywhere near you. Speaking of animals that can and will kill you, we have some crocodiles here. Last year we got a crocodile egg, which was actually just a print on the Jurassic World egg piece, so a nice print to see that there. You can also use this for dinosaurs if you really wanted to. But we actually got a few improvements on the standard LEGO crocodile in LEGO City sets in around 2015 or 16. Originally, the first crocodile we got was kind of this standard crocodile, just the original LEGO one that we got. We also got it in different colors like black and dark gray, as well as this bright green color. And of course, the dark green version got a lot of different variations across like the Lego Agents theme here. Got a little bit of a remote control sticker on his head there. The Lego movie had some police gators as well. So just the standard dark green gator, but with police lights. Just kind of a funny thing. 
until Lego City introduced the brand new crocodile mold for the Swamp Police run. This was a complete reimagining of what the crocodile would be in Lego form. It's a really cool new mold. I really do appreciate it, although to an extent I do kind of miss the older one. This one absolutely is more realistic though, even using a Technic pin to hold in the tail there, as well as a much more realistic styled head. We recently got a recolor of the crocodile in 2019 for Lego Hidden Side in tan here, representing a Louisiana-styled crocodile, as well as a bright green version of the crocodile, which just came out last year in 2021 alongside the other Lego City wildlife stuff. Speaking of the wildlife stuff, let's take a look at some monkeys here. Very first monkey mold we got actually used the Lego minifigure arms, somewhat uncanny, but it actually did do the trick in making it very articulatable. This was introduced for the Lego Pirates line and was actually recolored in the silver color for Lego Ninjago. And then, just recently, we got a brand new version of the monkey. It's a lot less movable, but I guess a lot more realistic. Getting two different colors of this fully dual molded as well as one more monkey introduced for the collectible minifig line, which is just a different variation of Chimp. Moving onwards to some of our other final small animals here, we have a selection of different types of Lego bunnies. So first of all, we have the standard Lego city-like bunny. We actually have gotten a lot of these. Friends also has their own style of bunny, which you can see in different colors right here. A pretty cute looking animal. Obviously some of the less realistic colors like the pearl gold again came in those collectible animal series, but I just think it's a nice animal to get in general. And the original Lego bunny was from the Belleville and original Lego girls oriented sets. This is kind of a freakishly large bunny compared to Lego minifigs, but it actually was used in a couple of minifig scale sets, namely the Christmas train back during the Winter Village. We'll be taking a look at the dinosaurs later, so I'll set this aside for now. But very recently, LEGO Harry Potter introduced a brand new hair mold. This is specifically meant to be a standard LEGO City style of hair. We unfortunately have only got it in this transparent glitter light blue version. We have never actually gotten a regular printed hair, but I figure that at some point we probably will because it doesn't really make sense for LEGO to create this whole new mold and only use it for a Patronus. Moving onwards though, there's just a couple more animals. Of course, you have the tiny little frog element. This is a favorite of Lego designer Nick Voss. He includes it in almost every single one of his sets, and the frog comes in quite a few different colors. We've gotten transparent green, pink, obviously the dark gray and the green, just all sorts of different colors. Of course, a lot of those are actually built into actual sets, which is why I don't have them all with me right now. Continuing onto this section of somewhat realistic animals and some form of fantasy animals as well, but starting off we have a lot of aquatic animals, obviously a lot of different sharks, again these are not all the different sharks, just a selection of the ones I had in the drawer, as well as octopi, manta rays from different lego lines, and all sorts of smaller underwater creatures. So let's start off with the obvious large ones here. In 2009, LEGO Pirates introduced the Man-Eating Shark Mold. This is a really fun mold because you can actually put minifigures inside its mouth. Yes, this will fit entire minifigs inside the mouth, completely hollow. It's really satisfying to open and close the jaws as well, so this is just a really fun shark to have. Now, they iterated on this concept with LEGO Ultra Agents in 2015. We got this robotic shark. It basically is just the same exact mold, but just in a slightly different coloration. Again, this Man-Eating Shark color, which is a pretty fun design for the agents line because of course the villains would have to be using some evil robotic sharks because after all are they even agents villains if they don't use them Next up, we got a really neat variation on the mold for Pirates of the Caribbean. In the latest Pirates of the Caribbean, there were some zombie sharks that were featured, so LEGO created this brand new animal mold featuring a zombified shark. And this is honestly probably one of my favorite LEGO animals. It's just such a really unique design, and what's really awesome is that, of course, once you put a minifigure inside for him to eat, you can actually see the minifigure through the ribcage, which is a very metal play feature, but one that I think is a really cool design. Of course, this is a very complex mold as well, featuring different bits and pieces of the skin that have rotted away to reveal the skeleton. Just such a cool design with the tail fin even being tattered with some bite marks out of it. Just a really interesting design for a shark that I honestly wish that LEGO used a little bit more than just the one time in Pirates of the Caribbean. 
And most recently, just in 2020, we got a new LEGO City Divers lineup, so we got another version of the Man-Eating Shark. This one is specifically meant to be a great white shark, so essentially they have printed some light white coloring along the underside and the bottom of the mouth here. It only appeared in one set so far. I can imagine that hopefully this will appear in more sets, but luckily the mold is alive and well. This just came out in 2020, so I'm sure that LEGO will still be using this shark in future sets. Now originally we got a few other sharks from LEGO in a more classic style. This is probably the most standard shark and we'll be taking a look at a lot more aquatic animals later on, but this is the shark in white. This was basically the very first shark that they did for LEGO Pirates. Of course it was in dark grey, the white one came a little bit later for their town divers line. Recently, we've gotten a very similar shark, but just a slight variation on the mold. They aren't exactly the same. This one in particular, with some green detailing, actually originated in LEGO Hidden Side. It's supposed to be somewhat of a ghost shark, although to be honest, it's not really too, too visually interesting. It's not very apparent that it even is a ghost shark until you actually see the eye coloration here, because everything else is just the standard shark. Moving on, we have two different variations of the sawfish-like shark here. The black one is the very first one that we received all the way back in the original LEGO Town Divers line, as you can expect. Town did introduce a lot of these animals, and as you can see right here, if we can get the camera to focus, this is a fairly decent mold. You can see that it definitely is supposed to be a saw blade-like shark, but obviously it's a little bit thin in the terms of the front nose. We also got one in the dark gray coloration as well, so a lot of different colors for this particular animal. But then later on, again for LEGO City Divers, back in 2015 we got a resurgence of the City Divers line and they introduced a brand new mold for the saw blade shark front mouthpiece here, which actually is a lot more rigid and sturdy, while also retaining the actual eye printing that can be seen on some of the more modern LEGO sharks. Now, before they introduced the newer shark mold, we still were getting the older version of shark as late as 2014. This was for the LEGO Super Heroes line. It specifically is supposed to be one of the sharks controlled by the villain Black Manta in a face-off against Aquaman. So he has a special sticker on the front, it is black and dark grey colored, and he has some missiles to boot. Lastly, we've also gotten a hammerhead shark from City very recently. This was just introduced in 2020 for, again, that LEGO City Divers Resurgence line. Alongside the Great White Shark, we also got this hammerhead shark, which is just using the standard regular shark body mold, but is using a brand new molded head, which looks appropriately realistic for a hammerhead shark. Some more aquatic animals include these dolphins. We originally got this style of dolphin for the LEGO Paradisa line. It's a very juniorized style of dolphin, but it definitely has some vintage charm to it. I actually do kind of like this mold as a vintage animal. However, LEGO recently updated the mold, actually appearing in a couple of different collectible minifigure series, as well as some GWPs here and there. We've gotten quite a few different dolphins in both sand blue and the lighter blue color, with studs on the tails to actually allow them to hop off the water, which is a nice touch. Moving onwards, we've gotten several different LEGO Octopi over the years. The original one we got was just in plain black for the LEGO Aquazone line. All the way back in 1998, LEGO introduced the black color of LEGO Octopus for the LEGO Aquazone line. And surprisingly, we haven't gotten a new version of the Octopus since. We've basically just gotten different variations of the same mold in years leading up to it. Although in recent history, we haven't really seen an octopus in modern LEGO sets. So maybe LEGO will be introducing a new upgrade to the mold at some point. You see for LEGO Pirates in 2009 we got this dark red version of the octopus or as it was called in the set the Kraken. And for LEGO Agents also around the 2009 era we got a nicely blended dual molded glow in the dark and transparent blue octopus again used by some of the evil villains which is a really nice mold. I love the way this octopus turned out it really looks like some sort of deep sea dweller and it's just a really fun and unique coloration to have in general. Also originating from the 1998 Aquazone line, we had this Manta Ray here. This one, to be honest, doesn't really feel too, too much like a Lego piece unless you really know what you're looking for and look at these studs in the bottom. It just feels kind of like a standard plastic molded Manta Ray, which was nice for its time, but obviously very simplified. Nowadays, again, just in 2020, we got a brand new Manta Ray, which thankfully is very clearly in the LEGO system with these studs on the top, as well as very clear connection points on the bottom as well. What's really cool is they actually have clip holders on the back here, so minifigures can actually grab the backs of Manta Rays, or you can clip stuff to their backs, which is a really nice feature to have. 
LEGO Ninjago introduced a variant of the printing for an evil version of the Manta Ray. This was used by the Seabound faction of Mare Guards in the underwater realm that Ninjago explored just last year in 2021. It's a really nice coloration, but definitely fits more in a fantasy universe than actually anything realistic. Obviously, the red eyes are a dead giveaway that it is evil. The City Divers theme in 2020 also introduced a brand new dual molded angler fish here. It's a really cool mold. The whitish part is glow in the dark and you have just the lime green used for the other bits. It's just a really nice piece to get in general, although it is very, very oversized compared to minifigs. And recently, we just got a new coloration for it for the LEGO City Stunts line just last year in 2021. We had these gunmetal gray and white anglerfish being used to attack some motorcycle stunt drivers who are jumping over their tank. A really interesting use for the mold of the anglerfish, but hey, I'm not going to complain because we're getting a brand new color set for a very new animal. In terms of some of these smaller animals here, you can see just an assortment of random small aquatic animals. We've got the older style of Lego fish, which was actually introduced for the Lego Ninja line. This originally was supposed to be just an ornamental design, although Lego did actually use it as some standard style of regular realistic fish as well in different colors. And of course, we have the standard Lego fish in addition to them, we've got them in different colors like the blue here for the Ninjago movie, as well as different shades of silver over the years. We've also gotten it in orange and just different colors like that. Lego has had a starfish piece as early as the Belleville line, which thankfully has not been changed. And honestly, I don't really think it needs to be changed. It's a perfectly good starfish that can be held by a clip as well as a stud. And lastly, LEGO has introduced a lot of different colorations for the crab mold, which you can see right here, which again remains pretty unchanged since its first initial debut. We got them in the Aqua Raiders sets, as well as even some LEGO Movie 2 sets, and of course the more recent City Diving sets. Next up, LEGO introduced a lobster mold. This was specifically supposed to be Lobster Thermidor for LEGO Batman to eat in the Batman movie, although of course it doubles as a regular lobster as well. And we got a recolor of the chef's hat in transparent pink to act as a jellyfish, which honestly is pretty perfect to me. Of course, LEGO Friends has their own aquatic animals as well. We've never gotten a standard LEGO City whale, unfortunately, but we have gotten one from LEGO Friends, which you can see here. Obviously very juniorized and kind of stylistic. I don't know why it has eyelashes. They didn't really need to include it on this print, but we do have the whale here, and there are different sizes of the whales as well for LEGO Friends. Disney also introduced a very, very iconic fish in the form of the Little Mermaid fish, which you can see right here. It definitely isn't very reusable outside of just its one application because it's very recognizable as one specific character, but it is a nice mold to get. And lastly, I guess somewhat falling under the aquatic theme, we have a set of different turtles from the LEGO Friends sets. These turtles in particular are stylized to again fit within the LEGO Friends universe. We have a baby turtle and adult turtles, but with basically all of these guys completely accounted for, I think it's now time to move on to our next category. So let's just get all these guys out of the way so we know that we're done with looking at them. And before we move on, I think it's time to take a look at just some of the last LEGO Friends and Elves girl-oriented theme style animals, which I've gathered a collection of right here. So, first off, my favorite animals in this style are hands down the baby dragons from LEGO Elves. You can see that five of them actually came with corresponding eggs, which is a really nice touch. We actually got the large brick-built versions of the parent dragons right here on the wall. You can see for fire and air and earth and whatnot. So different elemental dragons. We actually got quite a few of these over Elves' entire run, as well as a majestic queen dragon, which again was brick built, but the baby dragons do correspond with these Elves' dragons right here. Going back to the baby dragons, I really do appreciate how they actually included the eggs for each of the dragons here. It's a really nice touch and really makes them feel extra special. And of course, every single dragon is dual molded. So if you take a look at this one, for instance, you can see some Truly great dual molding in terms of the white and transparent blue here. I really do appreciate the way that this turned out with some printing of gold on the horns and the head. And of course, all of them have this special dual molding as well. So it's a really special type of mold to get. And I'm pretty happy with this particular elves animal mold. Moving on to the rest of the friends and elves styled animals here. We have quite a few more to get into. 
so setting this one kind of back where it belongs. You can see that elves also introduced a ton of different bat molds, so the bats right there are supposed to be specifically stylized for elves. They're very funny looking characters with some dual molded transparent wings. And of course LEGO Friends has introduced a ton of standard animals as well, including a lot of animals we've never actually gotten in the standard LEGO City form. Like for example, we got a lot of slots, different variations of tigers, some different chameleons, one of the chickens from Moana that's a specific character mold, different styles of owls, foxes, chimps, hamsters, which again we have not gotten in a standard LEGO City form, even a seal right there, and stylistic animals that are dual molded from the LEGO Disney line of different animals, as well as different bears and whatnot, so just a good assortment of animals that you can see here from the LEGO Friends and Elves sort of lineup. For one of Disney's latest movies, Raya and the Last Dragon, we got a specially molded Tuk Tuk animal. This is a really unique style of animal that actually you can brick build on top of. It's fully hollow underneath, but it's just an interesting animal mold to have in general, which is why I wanted to include it along this list. Speaking of fantastical beasts and animals, we have a number of different animals from the LEGO Harry Potter universe. First off, we have the Basilisk from 2002. This is again one of my favorite LEGO animal molds. The teeth actually glow in the dark, which are really cool. They're just a recolor of the LEGO knife element. You can really see that you can bend the snake all around, fully articulate this, so it's just a fun mold to have in general, especially with all the special printing. It does reuse some of the LEGO dinosaur pieces, but it does make sense in the reuse. That being said, just last year, LEGO introduced a brand new version of the Basilisk from Harry Potter. The head sculpt is absolutely a lot more realistic compared to what we saw in the film. He can actually open and shut the jaw this time, which is very nice. I do like the more realistic style of head. And they also use the brand new macaroni style of Technic piece introduced for the LEGO Disney large-scale Mickey Mouse build figures for use in the different linkages of the snake as well as using a brand new tail piece as well so it's a good evolution on the basilisk design making it a little bit more brick built while still using a specially molded element to fit in and i think that both of them absolutely have their merits i actually am a big fan of how both of them turned out and each one has their own style of charm now, one animal that LEGO did attempt to redo in 2021 not so well was the Fluffy Dog here. This is the original Fluffy Dog mold we got all the way back in 2001 to coincide with the launch of the first Harry Potter movie. And this is a classic LEGO mold. I really love the way this looks. It is essentially reusing different animal components. So those are the bottoms of crocodile mounts. The body here is kind of reusing the same style of LEGO dinosaurs, but they really were just kind of playing around with the style of LEGO animals back then and introducing a brand new animal in the form of Fluffy, the three-headed dog, which I think is easily the best interpretation of the animal LEGO has ever done. They haven't really topped this particular mold, especially when compared to the newer version, which honestly did not look all too, too good. I didn't even include it on the list because that's more of a brick build with just one molded head rather than actually being a molded animal. With that, though, we can move on to our next category of fantasy animals, up first, we have the dragons. So the Lego dragon has truly evolved over the years. We've gotten quite a few different molded ones. Starting off, of course, this is kind of the classic Lego dragon mold. It is what the dragon roller coaster at Legoland is based off of. It essentially is the quintessential Lego dragon, and it is a really nice build just reusing the crocodile head, albeit very simple, not very articulatable. You can just move the tail, the arms, and the jaw here, but nothing else. And of course, you can have the clips to attach wings to him, although unfortunately, these were really prone to breaking, and it was really easy to just snap the clip here, so it wasn't the perfect mold. That being said, we did get multiple different variations of the dragon, particularly with the Fright Knights line. Basil the Batlord with Lego Castle used a black dragon to ride into battle with transparent neon orange wings, which is very menacing. I really do like the look and feel of this dragon as well as a couple different black dragons with black wings. So just different variations on the standard dragon design that makes it look pretty cool. Although of course the wings are maybe a little small for the animal itself. In 2003, Orient Expedition gave us this absolutely exquisite remodeling of the original dragon piece. This is using pretty much brand new molds. Obviously, as you can see, the base mold of the dragon is just retained and reprinted, but it has a brand new molded tail, which is very ornate. It looks really good in action. And of course, that chrome gold style of head is really nice as well. A brand new mold introduced and really only used for this particular dragon and a few battering rams here and there. 
The transparent red wings also look really great alongside this dragon, and easily this is probably one of my favorite LEGO dragons they've ever done. It's just so ornate and unique looking, and one of the coolest molds of animals that we've ever seen. Moving on though, LEGO decided to introduce a slightly new style of dragon in Harry Potter, as well as the fantasy era version of Castle. You see, Vikings in 2006 introduced this style of dragon wing, although the rest of the dragons were pretty much brick built. However, for the Hungarian Horntail, LEGO Harry Potter introduced a brand new mold for the body of a dragon, which kind of set the scale and style of LEGO dragons in the future. As you can see here, the head can open and shut, so it has the chomping action feature here. The wings can flap up and down, so it is nice to see that. Some recolors of the banana in tan to use as the claws there, which is a very clever recolor. Unfortunately, you cannot move the legs, which is a problem they fixed on later models. The legs here are pretty much fixed, and they did introduce a brand new tail element, which they did actually continue to use all throughout different eras of LEGO Castle. And speaking of LEGO Castle Dragons, we have two of the ones from the Fantasy Era lineup here, an evil version and a reformed version used by the Knights. So, looking at this one here first, it introduced a ton of different new molds that were kind of just used for different dragons here and there throughout the years. This one in particular uses a really cool specially painted element, which showcases a dragon with a silver helmet on. Of course, you can kind of move the mouth open and shut, which is very nice to see. It actually is molded into the head itself. And this is articulatable via the Galador-like click joints, which you can see right there. Accidentally knocked his head off there, but basically you can move around the dragon like so. Just kind of a standard amount of articulation there. Thankfully, this time you could actually move the legs back and forth, so you can really get this into fun poses, as well as the arms themselves mounted on click hinges, and the wings can be flapped up and down based on the click hinges. So this was almost the best version of a molded LEGO dragon that you could get, especially because a lot of times we were not used to having this amount of articulation on a large-scale lego animal and it kind of set the precedent for future lego animals like the dinosaurs moving on we have basically the exact same dragon but with a differently molded head this was used for the villain faction of castle so you can see him right here just different colorations of the wings and legs and whatnot to just have an opponent to the good dragon now in 2013, for Castle's revamp, we got a newer style of dragon, just kind of in this plain red color, although it is using basically the exact same mold set that we saw on the previous builds. It's just another nice iteration of the standard LEGO dragon that we just saw, also featuring a flame piece and a jaw that actually moves up and down based on a click hinge, which was new for this dragon. And next up, also around the 2013 era, we got the LEGO Lord of the Rings slash Hobbit sets, which also introduced the amazing Smaug Dragon. This is easily the best molded dragon that LEGO has ever made. They have not really topped this design since, because it's using some of the standard sensibilities of the dragons here, but the wings are mounted on ball joints, so you can really articulate them all the way around, also very useful for construction and bionicle mocks, and you can also move the wings back and forth to actually have the wings either be folded up or fully furled out. This is such a cool design. I absolutely love the way they did it. I really wish that they used this mold for more LEGO dragons because, of course, right now, the wings themselves and obviously the whole dragon is a very, very rare set. It's really expensive to get on the aftermarket, and I really do wish that LEGO would introduce this in more builds because this is just such a cool building technique, and it's a shame that the mold was just used only one time. Even moving onward to the tail, we get a specially molded tail element, this piece right here, you can see it's a really cool looking tail, I love the way that this looks in general. And all in all, this introduced a ton of different molds for the dragon building system, which unfortunately have not been seen since this first came out around the 2014 era for the Desolation of Smaug sets. It's a really cool dragon, I am very sad that it only appeared once, and I really, really wish LEGO will maybe resurrect the mold for the wings at some point because it's just that good. But with that, there's just one last dragon to take a look at here. We received a baby dragon for the LEGO Harry Potter line and was also used in the LEGO Fantasy Era castle sets, as well as just some other sets in general. It's just a really cute baby dragon mold that I do actually really appreciate. Although unfortunately, this has not appeared in any LEGO set for quite a long time. We last saw it in some Ninjago sets featuring some ornate detailing on some temples, but we really haven't seen it in quite a while. And with that, we have summed up all of the animals on this side. This is the entire pile of animals we've already looked at. So now it's time to take a look at the dinosaurs. And I guess some bears, which we forgot last time. 
So before we get into the dinosaurs, we probably should address a few of the molds here that I just did not mention yet for some of these smaller Lego animals. First off, we have a few other insects here, specifically this whole tile here is made for these scorpions and some flying creatures. So we've got a lot of different colored scorpions over the years. We've also gotten a glow in the dark one, if I remember correctly. So this isn't even everything. And of course, we have different owls for Harry Potter. We got the owl mold. It was actually upgraded in 2011 for the newer style of Harry Potter line. We've seen that pretty much all throughout the modern era until recently lego introduced a brand new owl mold with the wings open we've actually got this in some printed configurations as well so it is a nice update to the standard owl although of course this one doesn't look like it's going anywhere anytime soon I also included some of the baby dragons here as well as a seagull mold, which they introduced for lego collectible minifigs and also reused for the lego ideas old fishing store set speaking of these flying animals we have a few different ones here in fact, we got the original classic Lego parrot all the way back for Lego Pirates. This is probably one of the most iconic Lego animals. I really like the stylation of this and the way that it's printed with colors. It's just a very iconic mold in general for Lego Pirates and just Lego. We got different colors of it, like this dark gray parrot right here. A lot of them were used for decorations on buildings, and we still are getting a slightly updated version of the parrot to this day. This one, in fact, was just released all the way back in 2019 for a city pack. We recently got a brand new version of Fox the Phoenix from Lego Harry Potter. This is a really cool looking mold and it definitely outdoes the old one that we originally got for the Chamber of Secrets sets, which was honestly quite oversized and very large. Next up, we have Lego Penguins. We've gotten this one with standard eye printing as well as ones with red eyes for the Lego Batman movie. It's again a nice penguin mold in general and really feels like it's keeping in line with the rest of these city animals. City also introduced a standard City version of the Eagle Mold all the way back in 2018. We thought that that was the last we saw of the Eagle until just last year in 2021. We got an African style of Eagle, which you can see right here, used for the newer LEGO City Wildlife Expedition sets. Prince of Persia also gave us a Lego ostrich, thankfully in a very cheap set, which featured two of the ostrich molds, so thankfully these are not too, too expensive to get on Bricklink, which is nice because this is the only time the ostrich has appeared, and you can actually seat minifigs on top of them for racing. Lastly, Lord of the Rings gave us a gigantic eagle mold. This, of course, is meant to represent the massive eagles from the Lord of the Rings series. Absolutely out of minifigure scale for any other application, but these are just nice to get in general because they are very iconic parts of the Lord of the Rings franchise. Next up, we have just some standard Lego bears. We've got the Lotso bear from Lego Toy Story. I don't necessarily know if this counts as an animal mold, although I guess he is a large bear, so I'll include him. The Wampa from Lego Star Wars, which did introduce this nice mold for the side tusks here. And you can actually have him hold and throw Lego minifigures, just like he does in the movie. And then some different versions of teddy bears. Believe it or not, this is a Lego teddy bear. This was actually one from the Belleville line, which doesn't really have any obvious connection points either. Although you can actually hold it by the arms and someone managed to wedge him in between studs. And then thankfully we got an updated teddy bear mold with... We got some in the Lego movie with the panda, a ton of different ones for collectible minifigs, one from a Lego City Fair set, and just a lot of different printing of this particular teddy bear mold. This is the Varactyl Boga, which we unfortunately have never gotten in Lego form since 2005 when it first came out to coincide with Revenge of the Sith. It's the animal that Lego Obi-Wan Kenobi jumped down to wave hello there to General Grievous. So this is a pretty nice uh, animal here, although it definitely is in dire need of an upgrade. In the same sort of style, we got one of the Dubaks in the first Moss Eisley Cantina all the way back in 2004. And thankfully, we have gotten a new version of this animal. It was nice for what it was at the time, again, reusing the dinosaur elements. But I really do like the newer style of Dubak mold we recently got for Star Wars. We got two different versions. We got one with teeth printed on the top and bottom for 2014's Cantina. And for whatever reason, one with only teeth printed on the bottom and not the top for the newer style of Cantina. Not sure why they took a step back there, but it is still a nice mold to get in general. Although, unfortunately, it's pretty fixed. You cannot move the legs or anything. It's just kind of a static statue. But finally, we are ready to cover all of the Lego dinosaurs because these are officially the only animals left. So let's get into things. 
Alright, so here's just some of the many LEGO dinosaurs we've gotten over the years. This is most of them for the modern ones, although of course I'm missing quite a few of the vintage ones. So the first standard dinosaurs we got were from the LEGO Adventures line. They actually had a specific line dedicated to Dino Island. And so for that line, we got a Triceratops right here, which actually is reusing the LEGO Western Longhorn Cattle Horn, which does make a lot of sense for this particular animal. It is very simple for its time. This was essentially the style of LEGO animal they were doing with a very similar style to the original dragon, at least the way that the legs are shaped. We also got a Stegosaurus alongside them, so you can see him right here with the spikes along the back, and surprisingly enough, we have not actually gotten a newer version of this particular dinosaur ever since we first got it for the original Adventures line, so it definitely is something that we do need from LEGO, and maybe this year we'll be getting a new one because we will be getting a ton of new Jurassic World sets. Moving onwards, we also got a T-Rex from the line. This is the very first LEGO T-Rex they did. Again, very similar to the original LEGO Dragon Sculpt. Even the tail is very reminiscent of the crocodile tail from the original LEGO Crocodiles, except without spikes. It's more of a standard tail, but it of course retains a very similar shape. The bodywork of this is pretty similar, and he can chomp the mouth all the way open. This was used a lot of times in not just Adventures, but also Studio in 2002 for a dinosaur prop, especially when LEGO was doing co-promotions with Jurassic Park. Also in this line of early dinosaurs, we got a few pterodactyls. The red one was one of the most common ones, again released with the Adventures line. It's very simple for its time, but it definitely has the vintage Lego charm to it. And we also got differently colored pterodactyls in the same exact mold, as well as a tan and a dark orange. You can see right here, just different colors of the pterodactyls. They were fairly common in the Adventures sets, so it was fairly easy to amass quite a lot of these just by owning the Lego Adventure sets, because they even included them in in quite a few small sets as well. Around this time frame, LEGO also launched their own series of collectible dinosaurs in their own canisters, kind of even similar to the Bionicle lineup. This one, however, is using pieces that was from the canister line of dinosaurs, but actually was a co-licensed set with Jurassic Park and Studios to represent the Spinosaurus from Jurassic Park 3. You can see JP3 written on his leg, in case that wasn't clear enough. Unfortunately, since this was essentially just reusing the T-Rex molds, it isn't really anything too, too special for the Spinosaurus. Spinosaurus itself. It really is literally just a T-Rex with a specially molded spine on the top, so very rudimentary, although I do really like the usage of the crocodile head as a tongue there. It just works out really well, and it's a really inventive parts usage, especially for its time. Other dinosaurs in this style include some of these other creatures right here. Again, these were from the canister style of dinosaurs, and the gimmick behind these was that you could use the pieces to create a ton of different dinosaurs that were included in the same set. So, for instance, you could rebuild this to a completely different dinosaur just by using some extra limbs and shortening the tails. Here's another one, and again, I do not own every single dinosaur. Really, these are just kind of the ones I've managed to pick up over the years. They have a nice and simple charm to them, and they are fully buildable, so even the feet you actually have to attach onto them. The bodywork comes completely apart in four separate pieces, so they are fully buildable dinosaurs, although again, a very kind of vintage style of animal here, and really not quite what LEGO is releasing nowadays in terms of quality as well as realism. Next up from that series, we got another different type of dinosaur. This is the Styracosaurus right here. It features a specially molded head specifically created for this dinosaur, although they did reuse it on quite a few different ones. Obviously, there's a lot of attachment points on the sides and back for different styles of horns and whatnot, so it's just a nice creature to have in general. And a lot of these dinosaurs, because of the versatility of the system, being able to be a modular building system for dinosaurs, we actually received many creatures that we've never gotten again. These ones are just the last two I needed for the rest of the standard retail release LEGO Dinosaurs collection, and this is the only LEGO Mosasaurus we've gotten to date. Now, at the time of the recording of this video, this is, again, the only Mosasaurus. Who knows if LEGO will do it for Jurassic World, maybe even later this year, but as of right now, this is the only one they've done. It's a really fun build because you can actually open and close the mouth all fully in different directions. You even can kind of rotate the jaw a little bit. It's made to be fully flexible, so it is a really fun model 
mold, and you really do actually have the LEGO DNA sprinkled in throughout this model, despite it being an older build and definitely not quite as good as some of the more modern LEGO dinosaurs, this is just a fun dinosaur to have in general. The tongue right here is using a really unique piece of the LEGO crocodile upper jaw in red as the tongue. I just think that's really good parts usage, and all in all, this is a really great dinosaur that certainly is one of the most unique ones I've seen. Past that, there were a few strangely styled dinosaurs in the fantasy line, specifically for the LEGO Dino Attack sets, or Dino's 2010 sets, that came out around 2005. The kind of premise behind these sets is that they were supposed to be mutant dinosaurs. So this is some sort of mutant pterodactyl. I think they called it a terror bird or something like that. So, some name that really is just meant to showcase the monstrous features of the dinosaurs. And really, these creatures kind of push the aspect a little bit too far, in my opinion, from the standard LEGO aesthetic. Obviously, the pieces are attached on just the standard click hinges, which are still the ones used for dinosaurs today. But the aesthetic is really, really out there for a more fantasy style of dinosaur. Look at the raptor, for instance. This was the raptor-like creature, a very, very large creature created for the Dino Attack or Dino 2010 line. And it's just a really interesting creature to have, although definitely does not fit a lot of these standard, more realistic dinosaur styles. Of course, the stars of the show were the massive T-Rexes. Now, the gimmick behind these T-Rexes was that their eyes can actually light up. So pressing a button on the head causes the eyes to light up. This was around 2005 when LEGO was really doing a ton of light-up stuff. Of course, Bionicle got the Paraka in 2006, also with light-up eyes with a very similar function. So this was kind of the gimmick behind these dinosaur sets. They're really, really large, easily some of the largest T-Rexes LEGO has ever done. They can be fully articulated, although there aren't really that many attachment points for these dinosaurs. Really, the only thing that kind of gives it away that they're Lego is just the studs slapped onto the back here. Almost feels like an afterthought to include some studs in the back because pretty much everything else does not even feel too, too much like Lego. What is cool, though, is that you can even open up the mouth, and inside, you'll notice that when I press the head, the tongue even glows. So, I don't know, maybe he's breathing fire or something. We got a green version of the dinosaur as well. For whatever reason, I have the wrong head on him. The head also should have a green underbelly, but for the most part, this is just the same exact dinosaur, just in green. Thankfully, in 2012, LEGO debuted a brand new dino-oriented series, one that basically set the precedent for all of the current LEGO dinosaurs today, and that's what these all came from. I really do like the style here. I feel that LEGO has really nailed the style of animals, especially with the 2012 dino line, and in that line, we actually got a good amount of variety. So first off here, we have some of the T-Rexes. The line introduced us to two different colors of T-Rex. This first one was in a more standard kind of dark orange and dark red coloration. They're still a little bit cartoonish and out there, but I can definitely see the more realistic styling of these animals. And again, these are the mold sets that LEGO has been using to this day. We also got one of the T-Rexes in green as well. So this is a green and dark brown colored one that was featured in the Dino base from 2012. Thankfully, again, with the resurgence of the Jurassic World lineup, we got a ton more T-Rexes from the Jurassic World line, as well as a few differently colored dinosaurs using the similar style of body that were again introduced for the tie-in movies. The first one we got was this T-Rex here. This was first introduced for the Jurassic World line. It essentially is supposed to be specifically the main Rexy T-Rex from the Jurassic Park movies, as well as the Jurassic World movies. So again, this is just a nicely detailed, slightly more realistically colored and printed T-Rex compared to the older ones. So just a nice upgrade there. This next one here is actually also supposed to be Rexy, but kind of a newer version of him created for the Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom line of sets. This was for the second movie in the Jurassic World series. It just features, again, some realistic coloring, just some lighter colors compared to the other one, but I do like the variation between them. There's a good amount of differences between their patterning and striping and coloration that really makes them feel like two separate creatures. Last up, we got another T-Rex for the Legend of Isla Nublar TV show. This is a pretty radical departure from the other color schemes featuring a gray and dark tan color scheme. I actually do think this one is one of the best looking ones in general. I just like how the color scheme turned out on it, and I'm sure we're going to be getting a lot more this summer when the third movie comes out. Also using the similar body mold, but slightly different hands, are the Carnotauruses. These were actually in-universe supposed to be smaller than the T-Rexes, but since LEGO didn't actually want to create a brand new mold for them, they essentially just reused the existing large mold and just created a brand new head. 
The first Carnotaurus is this one right here, released for the Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom line of sets. This was actually a tie-in to the movie scene, which heavily featured the Carnotaurus in one of the opening scenes of the movie. And we actually got a specific named one. This one specifically is from the TV show. I do not watch it, but I do know that it actually is supposed to represent one of the creatures that is very prominent in the show that has a very distinctive scar on his nose. The scar is a little bit cartoony. It almost kind of looks like a branch that's fallen across his nose or something, but I guess it still looks totally fine. And I do actually like the color scheme and print detailing on this creature as well. For Jurassic World, we also got the Indominus Rex. First off, we got a white version in 2015 for the first movie. It introduced some brand new mold sets allowing him to actually turn his hands that can hold minifigures, so this is a pretty nice touch. Obviously, the head as well is brand new, and even the body itself was completely specially molded. It's very similar to the T-Rex body, but this one actually has spikes, so it is a little bit different. We did get a newer version of the Indominus Rex, which was essentially intended to be a slightly more screen accurate version. This one is just in the light gray coloration, and we just got it a couple years back, again for the Jurassic World line, which was revisiting a few of some of the older animals. Moving on from the T-Rexes, though, there's just one last T-Rex we have to cover here. This is Rex from the Lego Toy Story 3 line. It's a very fun looking mold. We actually did get a newer version of him as well just for the Toy Story 4 sets, but it was using the same exact mold, just a very slight difference in the eye printing. Again, a very cartoonish design, but one that I think is a pretty fun one in general. Next up, though, we have some more of the larger characters from the LEGO Dino line. Again, back in 2012, they introduced the Triceratops mold. This became one of the rarest LEGO dinosaurs and one of the most expensive ones they ever put out, which was really surprising because LEGO, for whatever reason, did not include a new Triceratops in a LEGO Jurassic World set all the way up until years later for the Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom line, in which case we got another new recolor using the same exact Triceratops mold, so very nice that they brought it back in a different color, olive green and tan this time, but it's a really nice mold. I love the way that it's dual molded with the slightly rubberized horns as well as the very intricate printing on the head and body. In the same kind of style and shaping of dinosaurs, we have the Ankylosaurus here. This again is using completely new mold sets to make it actually fully buildable. It honestly kind of reminds me of some of the other buildable dinosaurs because this one actually requires you to attach system studs to the side. You can see there are stud mountings here, so you can really just do different things with it. And I'm sure the body will be used for a lot of different dinosaurs because this is not just a one-off mold. Sure, the top head is, but the body underneath is actually fully separatable and even is just attaching the tail via a Technic pin. So I'm sure that LEGO will do more dinosaurs like this using this body style in the future. In the second Jurassic World movie, we were introduced to the Indoraptor. It essentially was a specially modified genetically enhanced raptor. It uses the claws from the Indominus Rex in black and a specially molded head and body. It kind of fits a mid-scale where this obviously is really, really large, probably even larger than the movie counterpart, but it was meant to be essentially the main quote-unquote villain dinosaur of the movie, which you can see right here. Reusing his body type were these dinosaurs here, which were intended to be a little bit more realistic. You've got this particular one in the bright green color, which to be honest is not too, too realistic to me. It's one of the newer dinosaurs that we just got on one of the boat sets. The previous version of it, which actually came in this darker gray and dark blue color, I think actually did a bit of a better job in terms of giving us a little bit more of a realistic color scheme. Although of course, it's always good to get different new colors of dinosaurs, so I'm not complaining too, too much. And of course, there's a lot of raptors. So again, the Dino 2012 line introduced a ton of different raptors and we've gotten so, so many different variations to date. So let's first take a look at some of the ones we originally got in the original Dino 2012 line. This one and this one here. These again have slightly different printing to what we would expect today. It's a little bit more cartoonish, a little bit more stylized to the original Lego action theme form, but it is just a nice design in general. You can see the mouths open and shut, so it is a really good looking mold. And obviously this was working well enough for Lego to continue to pump out different colors and types of Raptors over the years. So it was working really well, no need to change it. And this was a great introduction to the Raptors in the Dino 2012 line. 
Jurassic World itself introduced four named raptors. These were essentially the main character raptors introduced in the 2015 Jurassic World movie. Now, some of these are very, very rare now because two of them were only released in a very limited edition Walmart exclusive Raptor Escape set, whereas the other two were included in one of the more mainline truck sets, alongside a brand new mold to represent a helmet with a camera on top of the Raptor head for use for military functions. It's kind of funny seeing a specially molded piece that literally has basically no other connection points other than fitting on top of a dinosaur head being introduced for this purpose but hey it works pretty well it honestly looks pretty cool and this was the first version of the main raptor blue that we actually got for the jurassic world line the second movie introduced a brand new reprint of the blue raptor in a slightly more realistic to the movie and more accurate design. I like both of them, but to be honest, yes, I do think that the newer one absolutely accomplishes the same job a lot better in terms of just making a much more accurate design to the movie, whereas the 2015 one was based off of concept art. We also got a few more raptors, again, from the Jurassic World and Jurassic Park line. This one right here is intended to be the main Jurassic Park raptor that was heavily featured in the kitchen scene of the original Jurassic Park movie. Really nice to get this particular coloration that will be very, very useful in mocks. And we also got a couple of other designs for the Raptors, including this very colorful lime and bright green one. Maybe not the most realistic of color scheme, but honestly, it's still fun, and this was introduced for a junior set, which makes sense as to why the coloration is a little bit more juniorized. Lastly, we just got another standard tan and dark blue raptor as well. This is just another one of the raptor characters that is specially designed for the Jurassic World franchise. The LEGO Movie 2 finally gave us three different raptors in the form of Rex's raptors from the LEGO Movie. You'll notice that each of these has a slightly different print. Obviously, one of them has a green stripe on his eye, the other one has a blue one, and if you rotate it along the other way, each of these raptors is slightly different. This one, of course, has a massive gun mounted on the top of the raptor body itself, and these two were intended to be the pilots of one of Rex's ships. They're obviously very much fantasy-inspired designs, having the streak of the painter, whatever coloration that is on the side of the eye definitely doesn't help for realism, but they're just fun characters to get in general. I just wish we got different colors because in the Lego Movie 2, they actually showcased a couple new colors like a green colored raptor that we never actually got as an official model. Reusing the raptor body piece for the 2015 and 2017 versions of the Jurassic World lineup, we got a few Dilophosauruses. They actually introduced a newer version of this fairly recently that's a lot smaller, but these were the first ones that we got. Again, it's really just using the raptor mold sets, but having you actually able to open the mouth with this very specially molded head, and I definitely do like the darker green coloration of this one, which was one of the later ones we got, as opposed to the first one, which is fairly juniorized and doesn't feel too, too realistic to me. Now, we actually got a size-accurate Dilophosaurus in one of the more recent Jurassic World lineups from 2020. This one is really just a very small dinosaur, but it makes sense because it is a small dinosaur in the movies. And if you want to see the size comparison here, you'll notice that, obviously, while some of the articulation has been removed, I think it made total sense to shrink the size down a little bit. And I'm still happy that you can at least open the mouth because that is a pretty necessary feature for this kind of dinosaur. In that same smaller miniature scale, we got two other types of dinosaurs and even one more for a Jurassic World poly bag. So this one again was introduced for the Lego Dino 2012 line and we've gotten a few more since then. We also got a very similar style of smaller Raptor for the Lego Dino Attack line, which I forgot to mention from 2005, which again, really do not feel too, too much like Lego. It has a very, very strange printing on the back that almost feels somewhat spray painted or speckled. And really the only thing tying them to Lego are the studs on the bottom of the feet. I do actually appreciate the newer mold a lot better in my opinion, because I just think that this one just more clearly is defined in the realm of Lego. You can hold a bar between its teeth as well as mount something on the stud on the back. Next up, we have again a few more different herbivores using the same body style here. You can see these were just introduced for the Jurassic World lineup, and it's always nice to get brand new dinosaurs in different styles, so I definitely am very, very happy to get more variety and not just a ton of different raptors and a ton of different carnivores. These ones at least are doing something a little bit different and give us very specialized new molds for the head, which are always nice to see. Lastly, we have a few baby dinosaurs. These are absolutely adorable little creatures. We actually just got a remold of the baby Triceratops as well in a more bluish color, but this was the first one we got in one of the Jurassic World lab sets in the olive green color. 
And we also have some of the baby ankylosauruses, one in a teal color and one in a sand green. And of course, these are very, very cute creatures. And I do love it when LEGO does baby dinosaurs, and I hope that they will make more for the newer line. And finally, we have to just talk about the last few dinosaurs. These are the Pteranodons or Pterodactyls from the Dino 2012 line. The first one we got was this darker brown one. You can see you can open and close the beak like so and flap the wings up and down. So this is just a nice looking mold to get. I do appreciate the way the wings are molded. And of course, Jurassic World introduced us to a ton more. In 2015, we got this one, which was again for the helicopter set from Jurassic World, just a gray and dark red version. And we've gotten quite a few more from the more recent lines of Jurassic World. This one was from, again, Dino 2012, so this greener one was also from the 2012 lineup. But these ones in the sand green and the olive green were just introduced for LEGO Jurassic World and definitely look really good in terms of printing. It's always good to get, again, new prints of dinosaurs, so it's nice to get these as actual models. And finally, to wrap up the dinosaurs, we have a ton of baby raptors. These were again introduced for Jurassic World, but we actually got differently colored raptors to represent all of the four main raptor characters from the Jurassic World franchise. So really adorable to get all sorts of different prints for them, as well as a lot of standard ones in the sand green color, as well as the dark orange color. Of course, LEGO originally made a few baby T-Rexes themselves in the LEGO Adventurers line back in 2003. This was the very first version of Baby Dinosaur we got. We got a few ones in the special drum lacquered gold element for the LEGO Indiana Jones line to act as treasures. And we also got a lot of them in the dark gray version as well to act as statues for Indiana Jones. And wow, we have summed up with that all of the animals that I had in the drawer back there but again, there's still a few more animals to see in the rest of my collection. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, we have the underwater and aquatic animals. Besides the ones that I mentioned right now, there's still a lot more to see in the underwater display. And of course, the collectible minifigures and some other miscellaneous sets have animals with them as well. So let's go and dive in. So here we are at the Neptune Discovery Base where there's a lot more different sea creatures to be found, as well as the creatures in a lot more variety. First off, you can see the man-eating sharks that we mentioned earlier in the video, kind of just cruising along. I've got a few different copies of these same sharks here, so I just managed to put them in all sorts of different situations. Obviously, there's a little bit of a school of turtles at the bottom here using the Lego Friends turtle mold, which actually is a pretty nice one that does fit in fairly well with the rest of the aquatic scenery. Now, these pieces here are not actually supposed to be animals. They're from the Lego Ninjago movie Shark Army, although they do double perfectly well as some sort of underwater animal because as they were supposed to be aquatic headdresses. Moving onwards, we have some different pieces of animals, kind of like an octopus hiding away here, manta ray over here, one of the newer manta rays, and of course another one of those amazing zombified sharks, plus a ton of dolphins on the top here, in a ton more colors than I mentioned as well. You can see even some Lego Friends dolphins right here, making an appearance, a very small baby dolphin, plus a yellow one as well for the Friends line, as well as just a seahorse, which was recently introduced for Lego Friends as well. One special technically molded animal pack that LEGO released also for friends were these fish packs. You can see them in the vibrant coral here. Very realistic style of fish that thankfully do not really necessarily have to adhere to the LEGO friend styling. They really fit in with any other underwater scene. So I've scattered these different animals across the entire scene here. You can see a little octopus that was introduced for the Friends line. Again, that kind of creature pack right there. So just fits in very well as very tiny different animals. And of course, as we move around, you're going to spot a few more of them going around here, including some more Lego Friends seahorses like this very hidden away lavender one hidden in the bushes. Down here, we've got some more different colors of the Lego starfish piece. Again, this is an orange color, so a pretty common one to get, as well as the older and newer style of Lego shark in the gray colors that I didn't show case earlier in the video. Moving onwards, we have just some more detailing here, some other sharks and some more hammerhead sharks. We can probably now work our way around the side here, including one of the creatures from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles line. So that's a fun inclusion to get there. And of course, moving all the way around, let's just kind of get at different angles here. This is a little bit hard to see, but I also included some of the Atlantis shark men here. These, of course, I don't really count under animals, but I just wanted to make it so that there is some sort of underwater conflict happening in the scene as well. Now up here, a different recolor of the starfish is in transparent neon orange, which is a really interesting color to get, as well as some other turtles scattered around, plus even a brick-built shark from LEGO Creator. 
All in all, there's all sorts of different animals scattered here. I definitely am not covering every single one. If you are interested, I did actually do a full tour of this entire massive modular build here featuring the monorail fully in action, even the motorized pump as well. I've linked that below in the description below as well if you do want to check out a full tour of this massive underwater aquazone base. But with that, we can now move on to the LEGO minifigures. And the minifigures have a lot of very special characters and animals that are added onto them as well. So up here, I've got a bunch of different minifigure walls. I want to start off with DC here. They introduced a specialized mold for these super pets. Again, these are more realistic styles of Ace the Bat Hound plus Crypto the Super Dog, as well as Wonder Dog right there with a special cape specifically made for that animal. So just kind of a cute design to have in general. And there's a couple more as we move our way all the way up to here. And there's some more as we move up. Obviously, Lego Legends of Chima was a whole animal-driven line, although these I don't, again, really count as molded animals. They're just kind of animal people, so it doesn't quite count. Up here is the new deer element that was again introduced for Harry Potter in the transparent speckle glitter type of blue here. This was the transparent blue reindeer that thankfully we did get a regular printed reindeer in some of the later sets. You can also see a brand new otter mold that they also introduced for Harry Potter, which also has never been recolored in a standard color, which is a big shame. And I'm really hoping that we'll get a standard colored Lego City style of otter suit because they do of course have that mold just sitting around. Over here, we have the newer style of Hippogriff Buckbeak. This is a much better one, in my opinion, than the one that we got previously, because as you can see, the eyes are actually printed, the wings are much more clearly secured on and can flap very nicely, and it's just a nice style of mold to get for Harry Potter. Speaking of Harry Potter, there's one thing we kind of do have to revisit back here. They also introduced a Thestro mold, which you can see up at the top right there. This was a brand new mold that was introduced for the Harry Potter Thestrals. It's a fantasy horse, but it still fits very well in the standard, somewhat realistic style of Lego animals. They also reintroduced the Lord of the Rings horse in white for the Pegasus, as you can see here, although these are not actually new horses. They're just the same horse that we got from Lone Ranger, except with wings added on. Going on back to the minifigures here, actually one last thing we have to mention are some of the LEGO Adventurers animals. These I also don't really count as animals, but we got some massive animal guardians like the Tigera build right there, as well as a Yeti who's hidden away behind the corner here. Let's see if we can reveal him. There he is peeking out from his ice cave. This is the Yeti in the Mount Everest set. With that, we can now move onwards to our next LEGO builds. First off, for LEGO Star Wars, we had a massive LEGO Ranker model. I really do hope that the Ranker will make a reappearance in LEGO's portfolio, especially after being featured again in more recent Star Wars media. It's a really fun mold, and one that was actually reused for the Killer Croc Big Fig, who isn't quite an animal, but obviously shares a lot of animalistic tendencies. Moving onwards, you have a Kawaken Monkey Lizard, which is one of Jabba's animals, who thus far has only appeared in the 2012 Jabba's Palace set. Moving onwards, we have a few more, especially again as we get into the collectible minifigures here. I'm just kind of scanning here, making sure I'm not missing any particular specialized mold. Of course, moving on our way up, there are a lot of different ones introduced for the collectible minifigure series. This was where we first got the balloon dogs, if you do want to count them as some sort of an animal-like build, as well as the time we first got the penguin, which you can see right there being held in the hand of the Arctic Explorer. Of course, we also got a specialized dog, which again, we did get some recolors of. You can see him right there. And all in all, there's a lot of different animals kind of scattered throughout here, including a special mold for a Lego skunk, which unfortunately has not appeared outside of the collectible minifig series. There's also a specially colored pig that also has not appeared in this specific pattern outside these CMFs. Moving on upwards, we have a black cat for the witch from the Monsters collectible minifig series. This is an exclusive print for the black cat featuring some yellow eyes. And moving all the way upwards here, we've got some more animals still being featured. There was a cobra mold that was introduced for the CMF series, but also unfortunately is one of the ones that stayed exclusive to this particular figure. Moving onwards, there are still some more in some of the earlier series of minifigures. First off, again, one of the brighter orange colors of Starfish was used right there. Again, that is the classic LEGO Starfish mold. But of course, as we move on upwards, there's still a lot more to see for the collectible minifigs, particularly in some of the more recent series. When a single figure actually came with two different dogs, this is the longer Dashin style of dog that we saw in black earlier in the video, but colored in brown, as well as the Pug style of dog, but in white, again, exclusive to the collectible minifig series. 
This is where the Sand Blue Dolphin first originated from the CMF series, but thankfully they did not keep that exclusive and we got it in one of the GWPs. And this is the city style of Turtle Mold, again first introduced for the collectible minifig series, and we recently got it in the LEGO City sets as well in a different color. Plus an adorable stuffed animal rabbit mold with a specially molded long ear mold. Moving onwards, there's just finally some last animals from some of the licensed series. For Simpsons, we got two of the iconic animals, which you can see right here for the Simpsons series themselves. They are very specially molded and really only make sense in the context of the Simpsons, as well as a special new print for the teddy bear. And lastly, LEGO Ninjago also introduced a brand new animal mold in the form of the Wolf Akita. This is a specially molded three-tailed wolf. The body shape is very similar to the other wolves we've gotten, especially compared to the Wargs from Lord of the Rings. Although this one again features a brand new head with specialized printing and also the specialized tail mold as well. So pretty much everything about this animal is almost 100% unique. The LEGO Movie and LEGO Movie 2 lines also introduced two new versions of cats. This was a recolor of the mohawk cat that we saw earlier from the monkey kid line it actually originated with this particular figure in the lego movie 2 cmf series which you can see right here as some sort of a battle damaged cat we also got our first and only lemur from lego in the form of momo who is featured in the avatar the last airbender series with the series making a resurgence on netflix here's hoping that lego will actually create more sets off of the franchise because we definitely are in need of some more the ghost-oriented spooky Lego hidden side theme also introduced a ghost dog mold in dual molded white and transparent clear, which is just a really cute mold to get. With Harry Potter here, you can see the variant of Hedwig with the wings unfurled, as well as a new mold for the Cornish Pixie, which I guess kind of counts as an animal here in the transparent opalescent satin blue color. Of course, this is the Duck Bricks channel, so we have saved the best animal for last, the Lego Rubber Ducky, who actually also functions as a baby duck. Nothing really too special to say about this other than it is objectively the best animal on this list, of course. And of course, LEGO City in 2022 introduced a ton of brand new animal molds, specifically the baby kitten here, the squirrel, and a recolor of the turtle, which we first saw in the collectible minifigure series, as well as a recolor of the horse as well in dark orange, and you can see a bit of a sneak peek at my latest Bricks and Pieces haul that is completely animal filled, featuring tons and tons of these different animals. Also in the sets, but not specifically pictured here, was a black version and a dark orange version of the squirrel as well. I do have those in the official sets, but right here was just what I was able to order from Bricks and Pieces before the site actually was taken down. All right, and with that, we have taken a look at all of the different animal molds in my collection. Now, of course, this is not a 100% complete collection. Namely, LEGO Friends and LEGO Disney Princesses have done a ton of unique one-off animal molds that personally I just haven't really gotten a chance to play around with or get my hands on because my focus was on some of the more quote-unquote realistic ones that work with other LEGO minifigures, but if I get them one day, I'll definitely be adding them to this collection. But beyond that, this is almost a 100% complete collection of the minifigure scale slash standard animals that are meant to go alongside standard minifigures and not mini dolls. Although, of course, there are some sort of mini doll stuff scattered here and there. Let me know down in the comments below which of these are your favorite animals. Do you own any of these? And if so, which ones are your favorites? Thank you so much for tuning into Duck Bricks and definitely stay tuned for even more LEGO news, reviews, discussion, and analyses coming your way very soon. Thanks and bye bye for now.